we're going to start at the very beginning-ish, not with, like when he was born and stuff, but you were a kid, you grew up in Boston. Can you paint us a picture of what your Boston looked like? Uh, Boston back then, uh, I grew up in Roxbury, Massachusetts. Um, I don't know if any of you have been to Roxbury. looks a lot different today than it did. Uh, years ago, they used to have actually a train that uh, was raised. It was like a above train. It used to go right by my window, so uh, and it would shake the building that I was at. Um, we lived at Academy Homes Projects, and uh, it was a pretty rough, <laughs> rough area, um, but... I always say about Roxbury, it's a weird thing. It's like uh, if you're from Roxbury, you're like family, you know, so it does have that little bit of an element, strangely enough. It's like you, you've you been through the storm a little bit, and if you're from Roxbury, you know what that means. So, I lived there for like five years with my brother, mm. and he still lives there now, and it's true. Like once you, wh when you first come, they're like, oh, you're new. But after like a couple years, they were like, oh, hey, girl. Like, <laughs> it is what it is. There's definitely a, a camaraderie there. Um, what were you like as a kid? Uh, I was quiet. I was pretty quiet and reserved. I didn't, um, I was a, a thinker. I looked and I watched and I, and I paid attention and uh, didn't, interact much you know uh, I had a the kind of the area that we lived in was the type of area that you couldn't do too much there wasn't like a playground or anything like that you you would want your kids like running around in or whatever but you know um, it was definitely the type of place that character was everywhere you know the people walking down the street you know, the people that lived above you. If you're in the projects, it's kind of like a little bit of a box. Everybody's like packed in together. So you got the people upstairs, people downstairs. The musics are kind of colliding a little bit. You know, um, you'll have uh, Latin music on, on your left hand side. You got the cat with the, the turntables playing music out upstairs from you. Um, you got uh, reggae playing downstairs and somewhere in between you're like in there catching a little bit of the elements of, of everything, you know. Um, my uh, my grandparents lived in Rockland, Massachusetts, which is like uh, South Shore, you know, and it was a 45 minute drive from Boston to uh, the South Shore or whatever. So my mother had like about nine brothers and sisters. And depending on who picked me up, you know, me being a quiet kid, I, they would put on music, they didn't really talk to me. So, you know, one aunt would be playing, you know, jazz, like Coltrane, Miles Davis, or whatever. Uh, another aunt would be playing the Smiths, uh, Cure, you know. <laughs> another, another aunt would be playing, like, you know, Marvin Gaye, Al Green, you know, stuff like that. Guy, my uncles played, like, punk bands and stuff like that, and they played hockey. You know, and these are these are brown people, <laughs> you know. But so, <laughs> so it was, uh, I'm pretty lucky because of where I was at and what I was exposed to in my neighborhood. Plus, because of where they grew up, I was lucky enough to get kind of like a mashup. Yeah, a I mashup mean, of sorts. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like I was I was exposed to different things that probably most people on my on my block didn't get exposed to. You know. And you moved when you were a child, like to a completely different like suburb area is that was that Rockland or I forget yeah I moved to Rockland um I got to a certain stage where um I started getting into a little bit of trouble it's not unlike stories that you've heard you know from any young kid in the inner city there's a lot to put your hands into you know it's a lot going on and to kind of fit in you do things that you probably shouldn't be doing and uh my mother, you know, I was I was still a good kid. I was pretty quiet, and she was just she wanted to give me something a little bit better. She thought, and brought me out to, uh, you know, the South Shore, and uh, better is a, is a strange thing, you know, <laughs> like what you think you're doing for your kids in order to give them a better life, you know. 
I had a pretty good life where I was at, I had good grades, you know, but she thought I was going to get into a lot of trouble, so she brought me out there. And uh, the experience wasn't uh, all that great. <laughs> it, was a, it was a huge culture shock, you know, you take a kid out of uh, the inner city and uh, kind of the surroundings look different, people talk different. My hair was different than everybody's. My lips were bigger than everybody's. You know, um, you know the way they talked to me, how they how they spoke to me, how the teachers talked to me. You know, uh, I remember my eighth grade class. I remember a teacher being like, you know, uh, we're doing Western civilization. Our eighth grade was in the high school. You know, um, I think that was the first year they did that. Was my eighth, you know, whatever. But we did Western civilization. I asked where the black cowboys were. And he laughed in my face and said, they didn't exist, you know, which we all know is a lie, you know. So um, was he misinformed uh, or was he really trying to make sure that I felt a certain way about something? You know, I, I have no idea. You know, as an adult, I still can't, you know, I can't call it why he, why he did that. But that was my, one of my first experiences there. And it was a pretty tough experience. And I was there for about three years, you know. Um, but with that being said, I got, you know, bad brains and Nirvana and, you know, keggers in the woods, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, and I could ride my bike freely, you know, without having to, my mother having to worry about what was happening to me, you know. So. There were good aspects of it. I say probably mostly the, the thing for me was again, like um, creati creatively, I was able to look at the world very differently than what my other surroundings. I got the best of both worlds, I, I would say. You know, uh, to be surrounded by brown people at an early age, probably the best thing that ever happened to me, you know. Um, I had an aunt who was a lawyer, you know, I had a grandfather who worked in social justice, you know, uh, I had all these really cool elements of what it was like to be brown in America during that time, and we were poor, so you know you have to like be creative, you know, my mother was creative with what she, what she did and how she raised us, you know, so. Um, and then, you know, I got to go out to the suburbs and, like, you know, complain about my sneakers and make my mother buy expensive sneakers like the other kids and, you know, do all that stuff and worry about only small things that young people are, are supposed to worry about versus, you know, worrying about who got shot, you know, or who got arrested or whose parents got arrested or... You know, those things still happen. Those things still happen to my friends that lived out there, you know, but I didn't have to see it, you know. Where did you feel like you belonged? Because it sounds like there's a dichotomy there. Like, you were the quiet kid in the, in the city, and then you moved, and there was a culture shock there as well. Did you feel most like you belonged in any one of those places, or like a mashup, like everything else? I don't know. I mean, belonging is a funny thing, you know. Uh, I think that... You know, I've, I've felt a sense of belonging everywhere I've been, you know, and also a sense of not belonging. Mm -hmm. You know, I still struggle with that today from, you know, where I live now to even my own band, you know, do I belong, you know. Uh, that's, that's something that I think every creative deals with. You know, Absolutely. we struggle with, we're, we're, I, I think a lot of creatives are insecure people. You know, it's like we're creating. We want people to look at our, our work. Why? <laughs> you know, no, if, we, if, we, if, we, if we didn't care, you know, um, we wouldn't be seeking the approval of, of others so, so willingly, you know. Absolutely. How did you get started in art and music? And did one come before the other? Did they kind of happen at the same time alongside each other? Uh, I remember I drew a picture like a stick figure of like a Superman and it was like his cape was flowing you know like <laughs> his arms out and uh my mother uh it was a pretty good picture and, like not for nothing <laughs> like it was really good and I was like probably around seven and I remembered uh the reaction my mother gave me 
and that right there, like approval. Yeah, that yeah. approval did did everything. And like I said, my mother didn't. I, I didn't talk much to anybody. So like she basically. That's how she interacted with me, you know, um, ap approving my my art, my creativity a little bit. Um, you know, uh, years later, that same, I mean, that's the same thing that dri drove me performing. Mm -hmm. I did a talent show and everyone stood up and cheered and- What like, did you perform? What a <laughs> Everybody's dying to know, right? <laughs> what did the young Mo Pope perform? I sang a, I sang you a sing? horrible song. <laughs> and it was like definitely inappropriate for the times. <laughs> I was like, I was like uh, in sixth grade in, uh, at uh, Singing Lew like, Lewis Let's Middle get it School. On, like <laughs> I went, I went to the Lewis Middle School and I sang a very inappropriate song that kids should not be singing in front of the whole school. And everyone stood up and gave me applause. And I jumped off the stage and I danced. Now they had an aisle. So like That's two funny. Rows, and I, like, I, I danced down the whole aisle and came back. And like, mind you, I had never spoke to like most people in my classroom ever. And like, I remember telling my mother being like, oh, I'm going to, I'm gonna um, perform in the talent show. I think I should do this. And she was like, I don't, I really don't think you should do that. <laughs> like, you know, like. Cause she's thinking of you as the quiet kid and she's trying to protect yeah. you from any kind of, Absolutely. Right. And, uh, and I remember I, I did it. I just, I just told my six year old this story too the other day, which is funny that, uh, yeah, I, I did it. And you performed in front of teachers the first go round and then couple weeks later you practice and then you performed it in front of the whole school at night. The teachers that you sing that song though, they knew and they let yes. you know? Yes. <laughs> yes, they did. Yes, they did. Uh, it was a, uh, it was like a, uh, oh man, I can't think of the name of the song, but it was, it was, it, it wasn't something I should have been singing, but <laughs> for a sixth grader. And, uh, and I remember thinking halfway through the song when I actually did the, sh the show, the talent show, um, I was like, I'm going to jump off stage. <laughs> I'm going to do it. And like, I took my moment and I jumped off stage and I did a split and then like <laughs> danced all down the aisle. And uh, I remember my mom. Can we expect some of that today? I'm just real <laughs> curious. Like, can we expect that? Right? No. That's what I'm saying. Okay. No. no my I don't want to ruin any secrets. My dancing secrets, career is, is that going, is that going through your head right now? Like, I'm going to do a split. <laughs> I'm going to jump off this platform right here. No? <laughs> no? If it does, don't quiet that voice, okay? Because yeah, we right. are all okay with that. Absolutely. No, I'm not <laughs> doing that today. Um, but yeah, I, I did it. And... Um, I remember the look on my on my mother's face, you know, uh, she came and my aunts came and my sister and I remember the look and how the look of pride of something that she thought I definitely yes. was going to fail at, mm. <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, I, I, I was addicted right there. Is that when you broke out? Like that's when your performer, the performer yeah, you broke out? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't do anything but sing. I, I entered a bunch of contests and uh, almost went to um, Star Search. You wow. Know, yeah. that's, you're totally dating us. You know that, right? You're yeah, totally dating us right now. Singer. Star Search. Do yeah. they even have that anymore? Hmm? No, right? No, they don't, they do, right? They do not. They do not. I was a couple of... I was Anybody a remember of, uh, Star Search? Don't leave yeah. us out here alone. Who knows stars? Okay, thank goodness. Yeah, I was one step um, away from doing star search. Yeah, that is so cool. So fast forward to present day. So art, though, when did you start art? Because we talked about. So that's your breakout. Obviously, your breakout yeah. like rock star in you kind of performer. I mean, it's all encompassing. I mean, I, I I rarely find people that can do any art and can't do some other type of creative. That is so true. Uh, Thing. It's a, I, don't, I don't know what that is, but most people I know do a lot of creative things or, or think creatively all the time. You know? Absolutely. And, and I'm sure, can you guys like resonate with that? Do you do more than one creative thing or do you find yourself reaching into other things and feeling like, I'm comfortable here. It's not my thing, but yeah, raise your hand. Yeah, I see a lot of nods. Awesome. And I think that's true. I think there's something about 
visualizing and thinking something into being and that empowers you to say, I can think this other thing and you know, make that manifest that as well. So I think that's very, you're right, it's inherent in creatives. Absolutely. I mean, um, my, uh, <coughs> the thing about uh, art is like, when I was younger, I had a TV in my room and my mother never made me shut it off, strangely enough, but she never, she my never made My me. family was the opposite. Yeah, she never My mom would come home and off. touch and see if the sta there was static on the screen. She would magically yeah. know. <laughs> Remember those TVs with the static? She would touch it and be like, you watch two hours of TV. What the crap? How did you know? Yeah. It was always my brother, too. He was a troublemaker, but. <laughs> she, um, they used to play these like foreign films on PBS late night and I would stay up late and watch these foreign films. It's just like, uh, you know, My Life is a Dog, uh, the it's a Red Balloon, a movie with a red balloon that was traveling through. I don't, I can't think of the name of that movie, but it was crazy. Up? Um, <laughs> was oh, that? No, it's Up too Modern? No, that's, that's no, Disney. That's <laughs> Disney. <laughs> that's Disney. It was a foreign, like, oh. it was a, oh, okay, it was a foreign film. It sounds like a premise though, right? Like, it <laughs> came from that, but okay. Yeah, what is Red, it balloon. Red Balloon. Red Balloon, yeah. Red balloon. We're all dating ourselves here, <laughs> everybody. Okay. But like they, they had, it would, they would have them all the time, and they would have like classical uh, performances. I think they still do that on PBS. But, um, but I would stay up and watch the stuff, and then I would draw some of the things that I would see. I would stay up and sit there and draw, and uh, I got pretty good at it after a while. And I just didn't want to do anything else after a while. I didn't want to do school, I didn't want to do it. I just kind of emerged myself into that. And I remember thinking, I want to be like Disney. My grandfather was like, have you seen some of these Disney movies? <laughs> like, they don't really represent us, mm -hmm. you know? And I knew what he meant, like, you know. Uh, so then I was that like. That sounds like a reason to do it, though. Right? Yeah, it's absol yeah, absolutely. But he was like, his, his point was be better than Disney. You know, Absolutely. You know, and uh, those things is what drove me to art. And then as I got older and I realized that there weren't many people of color represented in the museums that we went to, you know, there weren't many. Uh, our, our art as an African-American wasn't celebrated, you know, at some of these places. I mean, really, we have many, many artists, but they don't, I mean, you might know Basquiat. You know, yeah. I was like, but I was probably the only one that even, and even when I was younger, that he wasn't even like celebrated, mm -hmm. you know, or anything like that. So, um, you did know. that discourage you from keeping on that path, or did that like drive you to keep doing more and get yourself out there? No, it drove it drove me, and it still drives me today. I mean, um, resources and art wasn't seen as something to. Um, foster in a young mind, you know, it just wasn't something that people wanted to celebrate. They felt like you get a job, you work, get married, raise your kids, you know, do that whole thing. And that's what world my mother came in. It was good that I was doing this art and all that, but eventually I'm going to have to get a real job and do all those things, you know, that the world tells you you have to do, you know, and I... I see what's going on in the world today, and luckily there are way more programs for young people, there are way more outlets, there's way more ways that you can live off of what you do, you know? So I'm, I'm, I'm lucky in the sense that like, you know, the times are, are catching up to where it's supposed to be. You know? Absolutely, and you are doing the traditional thing, like you have a daughter, you have a wife, you guys have a beautiful home, and like you're doing that, and you're, so you're designing your own life, and you're, designing your career and you're doing your thing, right? Yeah, you know, I, I'm, yes, I mean, you don't have to do what the world says you have to do though. You know, you, cre you can create your own path. You know, you could back then too, but I wasn't, I don't think people were as strong-minded today there definitely weren't as many grants. There definitely weren't as many programs for a young inner city kid to get out and do uh, and be creative, you know, so. Absolutely. So where do you draw your inspiration from? So I, 
I, I don't like to use our global theme in all my questions, but you know, without using the word muse, right, which has like, everyone has different feelings about it, but where do you draw? It sounds like there's a lot of mashups. They like follow you on Instagram, like you'll do the records too, how you like oh, line yeah. up the records and like little sound bites of them. And, and they're always so diverse, but where on a, on a daily basis do you draw your inspiration from? You're in the studio writing. What do you, what do you kind of like hone in on? Uh, I mean, people. I mean, I think more than anything, I love people. I think people are, are pretty awesome. Um, Thank goodness. Those guys. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Um, I, I'd say people more than anything. You know, uh, people's experiences in life, you can look at somebody and think something about them and create a whole scenario of what their life is in your head. Chances are it's not that whatever you created in your, in your brain, you know? And uh, although there are similarities maybe even that you've, you've come up with, there's something that made them where, what they are and brought them to the place of what their being is, you know? And I love that. I love finding out what that thing is. And, um, you know, I love, I love watching people win, you know? I love nice. watching people like shine, especially if, if it wasn't easy, yes. you know, and they had to work for it, you know, so that's, that's a lot of, that's a lot of the, the things that I do, uh, in order to inspire myself. I, you know, I read, I look outside my door, <laughs> talk to the people in my neighborhood, uh, listen to music, people that inspire me, uh, in, in that fashion. So yeah, that's pretty much it. People. So in 2001, you drop your first album, very rightly titled One, and fast forward to now, present day, um, even just, well, 2014 is when you collaborated to, be, to start Still Gold, right? And yeah. That's your current, like, main, they're sitting over there, they're like, what are you going to call it? You're like, homies, like, you guys, you're the band, you, like, do things, and you're on this journey together since 2014. Yep. Talk about that, like, how did you... No. And you've done countless collaborations. I could list them all, but how did you know when you met people you were going to collaborate with? Like, do you, do you have a, like, what's that feeling you get? This is for you guys. It's going to be the warm and fuzzy feelings for you too. <laughs> well. Or not. I, I definitely know that when I meet people that I need to work on because they're not the best people in the world, <laughs> you know, I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I think it's more of a feeling, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think that people know that. Like, you know, you talk to someone, you're like, oh, there's someone I should be around, someone I should know, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we feel that with love, we feel that with friendship, you know, stuff like, I can't, if I can't be around you, you know, <laughs> for more than five minutes, it's probably not a, a thing that you're going to make music or create in any way, shape, or form with that person. So um, I would definitely say, yeah, being being a homie, someone that I can kick it with and someone that I believe in, someone I can work with, um, is one of the biggest aspects. And then how are we gonna grow? You know, Absolutely. that's the biggest part for me. I don't wanna do the same thing. Uh, every project that I've ever done, it's all been, it's been different. And I've watched really talented, people do the same thing for a very long time. Mm. And it didn't go anywhere, it didn't change. We were actually just talking about this. It didn't, <laughs> the, the art didn't change, you know, it didn't, there was no growth, right. you know, and I never wanted that. I still feel like I'm learning. And the people that I am creative with, I want them to feel like they're still learning too, you know. Mm. It's like no, no, none of us have this figured out, <laughs> you know. And you guys have been doing great. 2018, um, the Boston Music Awards, like what are some of the highlight moments for you with Still Gold in the last four years? But m even more recently, because with the BMAs, which are also coming up, which we're gonna talk about, um, what are some of your highlight moments? Like milestones where you're like, we did this, like proudest. Um, I would say possibly, uh, uh, Giving back to the community, 
probably one of the biggest things that I, I think that I'm proud of that we've done. Um, you know, the awards and stuff like that, that's all good. It helps to be able to create another record, you know? It helps to be able to create. It helps my heart to be able to create, you know? But um, to be able to show somebody that you can have a career, you can, you can do this uh, later in your years. You can be creative. You don't have to, like, go and sit behind a desk. You don't have to... Uh, um, you could take the road less traveled, you know, and and still be all right, you know, and that's the thing that I think that I'm most proud of is is those moments. I like the awards. I love, uh, you know, the write ups and stuff like that on our records. But uh, it's the moments chilling with my homies and giving back that probably I feel best about. Are you guys crying over there? You are? Jonathan's crying. He's, he's a little softy, so he'll, he's probably crying. Um, all right, so we are just about at the end of our time, and we have something very special planned for you guys. But what would you say, last question, what would you say you want your legacy to be when you're gone? Um. I know, sorry, this is probably like a 10-minute I mean. long question. <laughs> Just two words, please. Uh, my legacy... I don't know, with, with, there's so many artists and so many creatives that I feel like sometimes that things get overlooked, you know? Um, there have been jazz artists that didn't get noticed until well after they were gone. Nick Drake, one of my favorite singers of all time, um, he was one of those, you know? He didn't get noticed until I think about 30 years after he was gone. Um, so that's not important to me. I think being a good dude, trying to grow, being a good dad. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, growing, listening, listening to people and, and trying to take whatever they taught me or whatever and putting that towards uh, making the world a better place, I think is pretty much it for me. Like art is great and I feel like at this point in my life, creating to make the world better is where I'm at. You know. That sounds like an amazing legacy. So thank you so much for coming and chatting with us. Everyone, if you could just, <laughs> woo. All right. <laughs> so I know I mentioned it briefly. Um, the Boston Music Awards are open for voting now, and Still Gold is there. Usually, I do one of these things where I look at you all in the eye, and I say, go vote. I'll know if you didn't. Just, I'll know. And, and I'll kind of give this like threat kind of thing, but I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna let the music kind of speak for itself. And this is the first time ever uh, we're doing like a true live performance. So I'm gonna invite Jonathan and Janos to come set up and Mo, I'll let you go and set up as well. Um, they are nominated in various categories, artist of the year, album of the year, live artist of the year, hip hop artist of the year, song of the year. And both Janos and Jonathan, who you might recognize from last year's talk, they are also nominated respectively in category, categories for producer and Janos also studio, right? Studio of the year and Jonathan for session musician. So if you think they're good, like go vote, do something about it, okay? And this is the first time, so seriously, you guys are in for a treat. And um, yeah, thank you guys all. We're gonna, when this is all done, we're gonna invite... Uh, <laughs> Elizabeth up to, there you are. I was like, where is she sitting? Uh, we're going to invite her up to tell you how to get out of this behemoth of a beautiful building. All right? How you doing? Bear with us. This is always strange when people are sitting down and you're performing like, that's, uh, that's always, uh, uh, yeah, and it's 10 in the morning and, uh, you know. We can all stand. That's. Um, and you can move to the, we're all creatives in here, you can move it on. We're missing a couple of uh, uh, key members, but um, hopefully y'all bear with us. We are a band called Still Gold, thank you. Watch a little my 
stuff around me cause it's my Everything that I've gone through, go through Horrible things, sucking kings, destroying queens Separating the small insanity on the brink Ain't no more, no more, no the oracle, I'm trying to live good But this ain't affordable Biggest and rapists making me feel uncomfortable And Donald is both, I've been trying to go From change to hope and now I'm not knowing which way to go Years ago, I got on a boat, boat and boat, I never boat, went home. Boat, boat, Is this no more talking about? Whips and chains, whips and chains, whips and chains. Now I chill on the boat, don't want to go home, and I feel all alone. This ain't no more bragging about. Whips and chains, whips and chains, whips and chains. This goes out to Mandela, you can't stop a gorilla. Do you, brother, why you watching me do it, Ella? Master butter ceremony molecular Chemical secret in your brain Make it vegetables In my neighborhood the police are on my testicles Run brother run before piggy catching ya Few try to protect the villa Few of them try to kill us They don't care about who does Love Trump's hate brothers This world cold blooded Check it thermometer Got my people trying to build like a carpenter I get back by black Tip my bar to the We're dope cause the mama's made us strong enough Love a strong woman cause the rain no stopping her Is it no more? No, 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 no. Whips and chains, whips and chains, whips and chains Now I chill on the boat, don't wanna go home And I feel all alone, this ain't no more bragging about Sorry. Technical difficulties. But you guys sounded great. You guys are fantastic. <laughs> right. <laughs> right on. Um, yeah, okay. No, not doing that. Uh, that song was called The New Normal. And, uh, you know, our, our record talks about some very serious stuff that happens in the world today. So. Definitely check it out on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How y'all doing? Y'all are doing good? Put your peace signs up in the air like this. I like to do that every time that we do a show. Just to notice that they're every, that's something that everyone can strive for, you know what I mean? up in your brain, we slide it back to every neighborhood your people hang, make these gangbangers maintain the angst and I say thanks, my music help you pull the trigger main.
doesn't look like you, talk like you, and you haven't reached out to them, and you, you think that your life can be a little bit better if you do that, you should probably do that. There's not enough people that seek out other people that don't look like us, talk like us, walk like us, you know, people that don't uh, like the same things. They can teach you a lot, you know what I mean? A little bit more. This is still gold. My name is Mo Pope. Can I tell you where I'm from? No. Roxbury, Dorchester, Mattapan, Cambridge. Half an ounce and I'm a bouncer, Danny Angels. I bleed green, my team causing these dangers. I'm bumping Sabbath, smoking dust with headbangers. Let's go. I'm in the chateau. Lingo out. Beats up loud. Words are spilling out my mouth like the wolves is hollering. My speech is the moonlight. I'm with the greases, we've been beefing, having night fights. Watch me ignite life. The light mics, the brightest light in the newest sight, guys. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. My DJ is cutthroat, he pull it back and let it go. Do it again. Archetype, ladies and gentlemen. Jonathan Omen, ladies and gentlemen. Swaggy Tom Toms. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Mo Pope. Thank y'all.